Hey guys, good morning. It's Targo Cyclone FPV, and we're getting ready to do a live RMA. Uh, starting early this morning. All right, so here we go. Uh, let me go ahead and do a picture in picture here. And what we've got is we've got an RMA here. Guy says that the video on his drone is bad, I guess, or what have you. This is a HDLRC Aero 3. And so he wants to know what's going on with this. So we're going to open this so that you guys cannot see his name, obviously. And let's see what we've got here. All right. Okay, so we'll pop the Arrow 3. Now, the only problem with doing an RMA on, a, on something like this is that it can... Um, <laughs> I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to edit the video now because I didn't realize he's going to put his name on there. But, well, well, I'll tell you what, we'll see. We'll see. If this turns out to be something good, then we'll just leave it on there. So there's no sense in going crazy on it. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and just get this out. Okay. So the problem is that when we do a video like this, it can interfere with the feed that we're doing right now. So if that happens, this video may get cut out anyway. All right, so we're gonna pull out this Arrow 3 and we're gonna see what's going on. Okay, so there it is. We go ahead and get the antenna out. Let's check out our table here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and hopefully we won't see an interruption in our video, but if we do, just hang tight and I'll try to repair it so that we get back in business here. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'm going to turn on our screen here and we're going to see what we have. So far, we're not finding a very good channel at all. I'm going to keep searching here. Everything does look pretty bad. I'm, oh, there it goes. Hold on. Oh, I see. So chances are what he's talking about is are these lines here. So let's just see if we can fix that. Curious, is this a? It is a PNP. So he had to install his RX. All right. So let me see where we're at on this. Okay. Definitely is something, but the problem now is to find out what it is. So let's go ahead. See what we find. All right. We're going to turn this on again, and this time, I'm going to try it. All right. So we have video here.
my connect here to beta flight real quickly because I want to see I'll show you guys what I'm looking at here give me one second Here's his beta flight. All right, what I want to do now is I'm just going to go to his VTX table. And I want to see where he's at. So he's on B. And it should be, uh, okay, so B8. Let me see where that puts us. 5866. That's it right there. I mean, this... This should not be seeing that issue. So let me see if I can find out why we're seeing that. Because now that we can verify what channel he's on, but let me just check something. What did he do here? So he's got power 350. Hmm. I need to check on this because I'm not sure that table makes sense, but I want to see. So let me turn this power off because I'd be surprised well let me just see now we've lost all video I mean there's nothing left okay so let me do this let's go ahead and take the power out okay Turn this off, and let's get to looking at the VTX itself. It is a little odd, but I want to check and make sure first. Okay, so one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go to the HTLRC website, okay, and um, or we'll just go to the Cyclone website. I mean, either way, it's going to be the same. So let's just go and go to our um, drones, and then we're going to go to our three inch. Well, actually, it probably would have been faster if I did it the other way. So one second, let me see how I'm going to do this. Um, let's go to drones, and then let's go by brand and then let's go to HTLRC let's go that up okay and then what we want to do is let's find the arrow 3 right here and then let's look at the um, okay the VTX mini and let me see what we have on this description yep that's right Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get the, um, no, hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get a replacement. So we're looking for the VTX Mini. All right, one second. Let's see if we can find that real quick.
Hey Sam, yeah. I need a VTX Mini for this RMA. Okay. And I don't know where you've got one here, but I need one for this. small crutch. Okay, can you get me one, please? Uh huh. Uh, all right. So that'll help me at least do that. I didn't know if you had one in the tape. No, I don't. Know. I keep all those in this. Oh, gosh. All right, so we're going to replace the VTX. Sorry, guys, so we're going to replace the video again. It's an early start today, so everybody's moving like uh, frozen molasses around here. Uh, but we're going to replace the VTX, and while we're doing that, I'm just going to clean up a little bit around here. Um, and we're going to see if we can clear up that problem. Because it does seem like the, it does seem like there's an issue there. So we're going to go see if we can fix that for the gentleman and get this back to him pretty quickly. All right, let me put this key over right here. Got a lot to clean up, guys. A lot. Oof. It's too much mess, too many screws. Okay, so this is the board we're replacing. And in the meantime, I'm. The woman sneezes, you can hear her a mile away. Bless you. Heard you a mile away. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let me see. Is that the right one? That's, That's it, my love. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, this is the one of the new sets that we separated, huh? Yeah. Sweet. Nice work, babe. That's great. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this VTX Mini in here. So let me go ahead and just get this done. Okay. There's that. There's that. Now, this could interrupt the video, so hang tight, please. It just might do that. Like I said, if it does, we'll get it taken care of. But let's see what happens on our screen. I'm looking over to make sure our video isn't interrupted either. Let's do this. Uh, we are on channel 5866. And if I'm not mistaken, it's exactly the channel it's supposed to be on, but let me just check and make sure. So let's go back to beta flight. Okay. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to tell it to take, uh, I'm going to put on a channel E. So let's go to E. Uh, let's see. Or I guess F. Let me check this chart here. I want to make sure. Where is the chart listing in here? Yeah. Okay. So see, this is what's, this is strange. This table doesn't match that table. All right. So we have 5865, 5733,5740. See, it misses E entirely. So let's go ahead and reset this because there's something wrong here. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to pull the VTX out for the time being as I redo this table. So the way the table is on the paper that they've sent is not the same as here. So look. We've got A and B, okay? And then we've got uh, the channel. So uh, this is off one. We're missing the entire channel E for some reason. So let's go ahead and adjust that real quick, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to, well, I guess I'm just gonna type it in. So let me go here because we've got 5658 this doesn't even exist. This entire row here doesn't even exist. So let's do this. Let's take this. We're just going to try to copy. This is no way for me to. Uh, let me see. Control C. Control B. That's going to take too long. All right. So I'll just do it this way. Let me see if I can get the keyboard working around here. Uh, all right. So Control C. Control V. No, no luck. No. All right. So I'm just going to punch the numbers in. So we've got. Um, five, uh, let's see, five, six, nine, five. Okay, and then we've got, um, nope, that's wrong, sorry. Five, six, oh, it's basically what's up there. Five, six, five, eight, tab, five, six, nine, five, tab. Uh, I'm just verifying, five, seven, three, two, tab. Five, seven, six, nine, tab. 
Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I just did all that and I should have, <sighs> never mind, I did this wrong. And the reason I'm saying I did it wrong, it's actually I didn't do it wrong, but I should have copied this because I want to, I want to save this to file to send to HGLRC and find out if they've created an error. So let me do this. Let me say I want to take the, um, this is the HGLRC arrow, BTX mini, wrong table. Let's do it like that. Okay. And then I'm looking here if I had the other one and I don't, but let me just click save. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and change this. And I really don't understand. Control C, Control V, why doesn't it copy? So if I click copy and then paste, what's wrong with this thing? Okay, well, that's fine. If you wanna do it like that, we'll do it like that. This is driving me nuts. Never mind. Forget it. I don't know why my, my keyboard shortcuts aren't working. So let's just finish this off before I go and throw somebody through a window. 5658. Okay, so we're going to go 5658. Uh, 5695, yes. 5732. 5769. Sorry, guys, it's early and I am running on fumes right now, so I apologize. This is taking longer, but I've got to be pretty diligent in this one. So we did 5806, 5843, 5860, and 5917. Okay, and that should match. Well, that's weird because it, it, the other one says 5957 up here for race band. That's not what's down here. It's There's something definitely wrong. So let me just put an R. And we're going to call this race band. Okay. All right. So that does not match what was up here. Now, this one is going to be called, we'll leave it as Fat Shark. We'll put F. And this is going to be, and that's why I'm looking at the two, you see, because even though they look the same, there's still one that's wrong. So 5740. Uh, let's do uh, 5760. And then we'll do. Everything okay, babe? Uh-huh. I just had to open the gate. Five, who's here? Nobody's here yet, but... Oh, 5800, 5820, 5840. Oh, did I miss one? No, 5740, 5760, 58... Ah. 5870, 5800, 5800, 5840, 5860, 5880. All right, and that's Fat Shark, I guess is what we'll put. Oh, good for the love of God. Come on. Okay, so now we're going to do this one, which will be E. Oh, let's just do, I'll just, uh, let's see, E. We'll just put E here. And I don't know, I'll put uh, Cyclone E. Why not? Don't care. Part doesn't matter. All right, so now we're putting it, put in the whole row that is missing from this thing. So 5685. Nope, sorry, 5705. Holy crap. 5705, tab. 5685, tab. 5, Next is going to be 5665. 5885. I mean, I don't understand how this happened, but I've got to talk to HDLRC and see if they've got the wrong table in here or if they've changed this or what. So make sure I didn't miss anything. So 5705, 5865, I'm sorry, 5685, 
5685. 5885. 5905. Why am I missing something? God darn it. 5685. 665. It's in here twice. I've got a mistake here. Look, so they've got this twice. It's 5665. We need to contact them and find out what's going on with that. Am I seeing that right? 5665, 5665. Yeah. So they've got 5885. And then they've got 5905. And this is coming from their booklet, so... And then they've got 5905 again, so that's in twice. And then they've got it three times. Okay, so we'll just I, we'll just leave it like that. So this is what they've got, and then let me look at the rest of them, 5866. Okay. All right. So this guy has it on channel 8, and the second light would be B, which would have been... Okay, so let's go ahead and click save and the power is 25 100 200 350 okay and then pit um click save and we're going to save this to a file okay so let's go ahead and save this to a file this is going to be the correct so HTLRC um, arrow BTX correct table. And then we're also going to call this the HTLRC, uh, what is this, the micro oh, FDVTX mini. HTLRC FDVTX dash mini table. Let's just do that. Okay, there. So we have that file now in the future if we need to load it. So what I want to do now is I want to put this guy on, uh, let's go to E, and we're going to go to 100, and we're going to go to channel 2, E2, and we're going to click save. Okay, now I'm going to plug this in. There we go. So we should see the lights light up accordingly. So as it says here, okay, I need this thing to be quiet a second, so hold on. Let me go to motors and just activate and just get this going. Quick spin, should have done it. There we go, turns it off. All right, so going back to our VTX now, here's our VTX and we should be on E, E which would be two dots for the green, which is right, and E2 which would be one dot all the way on the end. So that does look right, so E2, and now let's go ahead and turn on our, our uh, screen here and see what we got. So E2 should be getting me to 5685. And there we are, 5685. And let me check now the antenna. Make sure everything here looks good. Yep, that looks good and that looks good. I don't see any problems there. I do see a little bit of the lines. So let me check something here because I'm wondering if the, I mean, I can't, oh, ooh, that's hot. Let me turn this off. That is still, set. oh, I put the power to 100, so that's good at least. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this new connector in because I wanna see if that thing has been kinked up too much or whatever. So let's try this now with a different connector and let's see what happens. Okay. No, I mean, the picture's okay. It's, it's, it, it is a little glitchy, though. Um, it is a little jumpy on here. Uh, let me see if I can... Now, that's power at 100. So, let me see. We've got 20. Okay. So, let's go ahead and change it to 200. Save. It really shouldn't even be making a difference. It's close. Let's go to save. And now let's arm it and see what we got. Now this says it's got 4.19 volts. Well, that doesn't make any sense either because this should be putting off at 5 volts. 
So this is another thing we need to look at here is we're getting a reading on the screen. Let me show you. See, we're getting a reading on the screen of 4.18 volts. This is going to be very low. So let me go ahead and get the multimeter now. And let's see if that voltage reading is correct. And if it is, we may have a bad 5 volt output. So let's see what we got. Let's get our multimeter. There is my new one. I have a new one here. Here it is. Okay. So let's get the new multimeter. Turn the screen off here. Let's see what we're getting as a reading from our 5 volts. All right, so where are we? Um, right here. All right, I just got to put this down somewhere so where I can function, okay? So let's put this on the table here. And I'm just going to take it from the plug, all right? So here's the plug, and this should be the... 5 volt pin and then I'm just going to come over to any ground okay so I'm getting a 5.4 on this which is kind of odd because the board is not reading as as it's getting 5.4 so why let me see let me put this back in and let's verify. Now, this is the old VTX, okay? Which is pumping out 300 something milliwatts. But let's turn this on. I know there's no antenna on it. I'm not worried about that right now. It does. It says 4.18. So let's go ahead and check. We have to be careful here because this is very close. Five point three eight, four point one eight, four point one nine. Okay, so the question I have now is where is the five point one eight or the four point one nine coming from? The reading from that would not make any sense. All right, so I'm going to disconnect this, and I do see a drop. Okay, so let me start looking now. Now I need to go with the old man goggles. So you guys will have to give me a second while I look at this. Okay. I'm gonna check the five volt coming from the receiver as well. So here's here's this. I'm getting 5.4 clean volts there. Five point four roughly clean volts there. And then let me look at the camera. Five point four. There's nothing here in the four range. I don't believe that we have an issue. Uh, with anything here, my concern now is, is this an issue? You see, we can, we can see the grainy video, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not the quality we would want it to be. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's definitely not what we would be expecting. But the question is, why is it reading? So let me go to power here and battery. Make sure we are seeing 12.5. Um, and that is correct. The amp meter's a little off, not too bad. I mean, it, it's off. Sorry, that's not true, it is off. Um, it's definitely not accurate in terms of the amps being used. So let me take this off and click save. Okay. Now I believe that if we go to our ports, let me see if you guys can see that. So we should have our ESC. Set here, so let's go to configuration. Okay, let's go to our motors. Okay, let's activate them. Okay. No, 
it's not going to be an MSP sensor. So let me go back here. Okay, okay. You know what, let me check something. So he's using, all right, let me go here to the CLI. Let me do a virtual check. Okay, so I'm going to do a, a dump here of the file. I'm gonna take that. I'm going to paste that, copy and paste that right now into my file. So file, let's go file, new, paste. All right. And I'm going to save this one. Save as, and I'm actually going to put the customer's name because he, Ray, is right on, he's spot on with this. So let's go ahead. Ray, nice job. Let's go spot on with this and let's go to, um, oh, let's see, where am I putting these? This is going under software and then customer. And then we're going to do a, uh, no, hold on a second. Maybe it goes under beta flight and beta flight. Uh, where did I put these? Clean flight. Where's clean flight? Here it is. And then we're going to go to configurations. There we go. I'm going to click new folder. And we're going to go to um, Ray. Let's do that. And we're going to call this one uh, the HDLRC. Arrow or me. Uh, two, two, three, five. Okay, so we're gonna save that. Not txt. Okay, so let's save that real quick. And now what I'm gonna do is let me go back and disconnect and reconnect this. Let it find itself one more time while this thing is cooking now. Okay, so we can look at this and say that the two dots represent. Um, it's on channel, well, no, that's right. It's on channel E2. Uh, and let's just go and connect. And let's see what our VTX is showing. And our VTX is showing channel 225. Okay, that's fine. Um, everything else looks good. And I'll just put, I'll put here. No, I'll leave it like that. Okay, whatever. Uh, all right, so this part looks good now. So now what I want to do is I want to do, a, I'm going to update this real quick. So let's go ahead and flash this to, when we were running on here, it said we were running the HDLRC F405. So let's do that, HDLRC, EFGH, I'm gonna unplug the VTX, there's no sense of cooking it, EF, where am I at? Should be right here, HGLRC F405, here we are. Hey, hey, what's up? It's my boy, my boy's awake this morning, let's say good morning. Top of the, mo oh, look at you. What's up, Ashton? You see good? Yes, sir. You ready for football? Yes. Yeah, I'm already excited. Good morning. 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 Okay. Sorry, we're going to be flashing this. Everybody's going crazy at my house. Okay, so we've got the 
sorry, let me, I'm screwing with the screens here. So there we go. So, all right, so we've got this. It says programming successful. I'm going to go back and connect. I'll apply the custom defaults here. Okay. And let's just see. I mean, we're going to do a firmware update anyway. We just want to see. I'm, I'm curious now to see what the problem is because it's reading wrong, but let's just see what's up. Okay, so our voltage is reading right. So now I'm going to go to our VTX table and I'm going to load it. I'm going to load the one that we have from HLRC. So it's going to be HLRC arrow, th uh, this one. Correct table. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. That should be, yep. Yeah. So let's load this one. Okay, let's save. Let's go to setup here. That's my fault. I should have gone here. And so we were going to do, I believe the ESC was on this side. And I believe this was like this. And then I believe on UART 3, we had smart audio. There we go. Let's click save. Okay. Now we're going to go back. All right. And we're going to go ahead and put D shot 600, I suppose. And we'll go ahead and do this. Just try to set it up somewhat the same. We don't need any of this or this. We are going to put here serial bus and S bus here. Uh, we will take off uh, air mode and anti-gravity. He can adjust that later if he wants. And let's see, everything else looks good. So let's click save. Okay. So far so good. Let's connect again. And let's go to our, let's make sure everything calibrates properly. Let's go to our video transmitter table and there we go. See how everything's back to normal. So we got those set up. And what we want to do is we want to go and set our band. We're going to go to E, -E. we're going to go to E2, and we're going to set it to, uh, let's see, power will be 100. Click Save. Well, now let's go ahead and plug this in. All right. Let me get my power from my monitor because it's running out. All right. So now we've got, we're looking at this here. I've got the screen on now. What I want to do is I'm going to go to my OSD and I'm going to tell it that I want, uh, let's see, I want my, let me find it here. We will do battery voltage. I'll take that one to start 16.8, that's fine. Let's put that one at the top. I mean, so, sorry, it's 12.6, I apologize. And then we're going to do, um, let me see. I think I can leave it like this. I'm gonna click save. And let's see, I'm on five, six, eight, five, and this is gonna be five, six, eight, five, so that's right. And now let me check the VTX for power. Okay, so here's the weird part. Let me go back down here now. Let's go back to OSD and let's do the um, let me do the BTX channel. I want to make sure I'm seeing this right. Okay, so there's something wrong with the table, I think. Let me put this down here. Click save. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the video transmitter and I'm going to change this to 25 and click save. And I want to see now what changes on here. Okay, so it does say 25 here. All right, on, the, on, my, on my monitor, it says, it says, uh, oh, there's something that doesn't make sense, 225, and if I change it to 100 and click save, it does say 100 now, okay, so 100, there you go. If I change it to channel, well, no, that's fine, actually. That works. So that works out well. 
Okay, so I still have a lot of interference on this. It's not giving me the best signal. Um, and the VTX is severely overheating at this point. I find it to be extremely hot. And you can see that, I think what you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but let me just, let me make the screen bigger here. Okay, and now I'm just, this is, I'm just gonna, I get a lot of, when I move this, I cannot get this wire loose, let me just see. Hey, what'd you find in that box? Airplanes. Where are they? In Ashton's ears. No, no, no. Those are mine. <laughs> Did you take the new ones? Ashton, those are your dad's. <laughs> Why are you taking mine, you fool? trying to come upstairs and like, look at my brand new AirPods. Look how cool I am. No, no, no. Those have to be, those are actually being returned to Apple. I just wanted to tease yeah, you. You're I know. Those are getting returned to Apple. You don't order them by accident. Sucks to be you. Sucks to be you. All right, so we do, there, I mean, there does seem to be, um, I don't like the way this is coming out, so I've got to, I'm going to go ahead and swap the VTX again now, put this other one, the new one on, all right. Hey, Sam, can you find me another VTX, please? Yeah. Actually, this one's fine. Sure? Never mind. Yeah. Okay, so the problem here, I think this is good. The problem is that um, I don't know if it's that it's overheating uh, because this one now plugged in and seems to be just fine. I have no lines, no nothing like that, nothing to worry about here. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to swap the VTX. Now, I'm going to tell you that placing the receiver directly on top of the VTX has never been something that I've been in favor of. And I know that that's how it is here. And I'm not saying that that's any issue. What I am saying is, you know, you, you affect the cooling of it tremendously. So when you've got this covered like that, you can affect the cooling here. We need to get some airflow into this. So I'm going to swap out the VTX. I will tell you that, okay, now I can see the lines getting a little, it's like getting a little bit more, but that's because it's getting hot. That's what happens when these things sit. It, it degrades. I mean, the, the, the strength of it degrades. So, all right, this has been a very long video for whatever reason. This should have been a quick RMA. But um, uh, I have a feeling that if I leave this sitting here for a while, I'm going to see the same issue pop up because it's overheat, because it's getting hot. But you see, like right now, look at that. Let me see if I can get this too. And it, and it could very well. I mean, it looks good. I have no problem there. So I'm going to swap the VTX out. And if I do a comparison between the two, uh, let me just do that real quick. If I do a comparison between the two, and I'll let you guys see this. So if I do this comparison here, okay, this is the original. Okay. And I can see on here some lines running down the screen. I mean, you can. You can see it. It's not as, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but let me see if I can zoom in on that. Okay. So... Now you can't really see that on. I don't think the video is not picking it up, but I can see a little bit of a little bit of uh, a little bit of issues on the screen, and I can see it especially like right here. Now this could very well just be the monitor being laid up like that. But let me go ahead and swap these out like this. Let's see what we got. Okay, so that problem doesn't exist here. So yeah, it does look like the other one did have a little bit of interference issues. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swap these out now. There, all right, finally, we got somewhere with this. So let me go ahead and do that. And at the same time, I am going to uh, contact uh, HGLRC and f find out uh, why the VTX table is so whoppy job. Let me put this back up and we will go ahead. Now, I will tell you that these VTXs do get hot. They do have problems every once in a while. So you know, when you start getting smaller and compact these things, so you've got to let them breathe. So by all means, please do not, if you can avoid it, try not to pack um, anything on top of the VTX. Try not to tape anything to it. It needs to cool. That's the, just, just the final on it. If you don't let it cool, uh, you will damage it. Uh, it will get damaged. Uh, and, and antenna or not, these things get hot. And when they get that hot, it's not so much, okay, maybe, maybe we take the damage out. What we'll say is the video signal will degrade. 
Okay, let's just leave it like that. And that's a fact because if you take a VTX and you take a power meter and you leave it there and you measure the, um, the um, signal at the beginning before it gets hot and then you measure it afterwards, you're going to see it degrade. I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. So we're just going to now tighten this down just enough to where we see the, the screw wrap into the vinyl or to the, um, yeah, to the nylon there. Nothing more than that, right? Because I need to leave the gap underneath also open uh, for cooling. Oh, this has been a long video. Okay. Um, I apologize for wasting y'all's time this morning and taking so long, but I've got to be thorough and, you know, we got to make sure that everything's good. So I'm still confused about the VTX table. And I'm going to go and check to see if they have deviated from the book or if there's been an update since they put that out. But for right now, we're going to stick with the what the manual says the channel should be. All right. All right, that's perfect. Now, as far as this receiver goes, um, I'm going to lay the receiver down in a way to where it's not sitting on top of there. If the customer wants to change it again, I've given my, um, I've given my input on it. Okay, uh, so let me go do this. Okay. Let me just kind of try to squeeze this in such a way. Okay. Just leave it like that for now. All right. And now let's get the top. Let's put it on. Now I know the customer is going to end up having to open this back up, which is why I'm leaving this antenna wire here for him because I want him, he's got to put his receiver back where he wants it. I'm just advising him not to put it on top of the VTX. I mean, look, there's not enough room left in here. Okay. If you look in this, there's not enough room. You don't want to take this gap up with your receiver. All right. That's, I just, I wouldn't do it. Uh, let me go ahead and get this out of here so we can get these wires clear so it can at least breathe there too. All right. And so he's going to end up opening this up anyway, so I'm leaving it like that so he can just fold it over. Now, normally we would take it and fold it the other way, but his, VT, his receiver's on this side. So in the notes that I send him, I'll tell him he needs to rearrange his receiver, put it how he would like it to be, but it needs to not sit on top. All right, so with this closed up, we're going to plug it back in. I'm going to verify that I have video. I do, and it is clean. Uh, I have no lines on this video at all, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, and to show you guys that, let me take this screen again and I'll show you what I'm looking at here. There is absolutely nothing on this video. God darn it. Let me see if I can get this <laughs> wire here. So you can see the video and try to get that to fit. And there's, there's, well, except for my stuff. Everything looks clean on here. I have no problems at all with it. So I'm very happy with the way this is. But you can't leave it like that. You got to get flying, to, get it flying or else it's going to overheat. Okay. All right, guys, that does it. Uh, sorry for the long video. This is a 50 minute video that should have been about 10. I don't know, maybe I'm just slow this morning, but I wanted to be thorough on this one. So this is going to be the VTX that we're going to RMA, and we're going to take that off. I'm going to put that in here. Okay, and that does it. Hey, you guys, if you have any questions, please, uh, as always, you can uh, hit me up on the website or, wait, there's something new. Uh, if you go to our, i got to change that, right? So let me go, I'll change it on the next video, uh, to our group, our uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cyclone FPV. Uh, go to our online page, our group there now. We've got uh, a lot of members there that are willing to help you guys. You can get instant answers on a lot of things. So I meant to put that on there and I forgot. I will update that for the next video, okay? Uh, other than that, guys, please follow us on Facebook. And there's our Facebook link now. And then, uh, as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sorry about this long video. I'll try to make them a little bit quicker. Other than that, God bless. Be safe. Spend time with your family, guys. You don't know how much time you got left. So please, please make the most of it, okay? You can always fly later. Talk to you soon, guys. Peace.